In this lecture, we will talk about kinetic molecular model of an ideal gas. The goal of any molecular theory of matter is to understand the macroscopic properties of matter in terms of its atomic or molecular structure and behavior. Once we have this understanding, we can design materials to have specific desired properties. Theories have led to the development of high strength steel, semiconductor materials for electronic devices, and countless other materials are essential to today's technology. In this section, we will consider a simple molecular model of an ideal gas. The kinetic molecular model represents the gas as a large number of particles bouncing around in a closed container. In this section, we use the kinetic molecular model to understand how the ideal gas equation of state is related to Newton's laws. So here uh, we'll talk of um, um, several steps and uh, um, and uh, you may need to go over them uh, several times. So uh, don't get discouraged. All right, okay, so let's start with few assumptions. So the assumptions of an ideal molecular model are a container with volume V contains a large number of identical molecules and we denote large number by capital N and each molecule has mass M. So the volume symbol we will use V the number of particles or molecules is n and mass m and all those molecules are identical. So this is one of the assumptions. The molecules behave like point particles that are small compared to the size of the container and the average distance between molecules. Right? Uh, so molecules do not have any size, any volume. The molecules are in constant motion and undergo perfectly elastic collisions. So when we say perfectly elastic collisions, that means law of conservation of momentum as well as law of conservation of energy, both are satisfied or hold good, held good. The container walls are perfectly rigid and do not move. So during collisions, the molecules exert forces on the walls of the container. This is the origin of pressure that the gas exerts. In a typical collision, uh, shown here, the velocity component parallel to the wall is unchanged. So parallel to the wall, so this is my wall, and parallel to the wall is unchanged. Um, and the component perpendicular to the wall, so this is my component perpendicular to the wall, um, reverses direction after collision, but does not change in magnitude. So let's start with um, our assumption that we will assume that all molecules in the gas have the same x component of velocity. This is not correct, but at least it will help clarify the basic idea of uh, the model. For each collision, there is a change in momentum. So for each collision, collision, change in momentum, change in momentum is equal to m magnitude vx, x component, negative m times or time or maybe I can write negative vx magnitude and this is negative. So total change is 2m vx or magnitude of vx. 
So this is the change in momentum of each collision. If a molecule is going to collide with a given wall, area A, so let's look at this picture here. So if a, man, if a molecule is going to collide with a given area, this is my cross-section area A, during a small time dt, then the at the beginning of dt, the small time uh, interval dt, it must be within a distance dx and which is given by vx time dt. So let me write it down here dx is magnitude vx and small time interval dt uh, from the wall. So this must be all the molecules within that distance uh, to collide with the wall and it must be headed towards the wall. So the number of molecules that collide with A, the number of molecules that collide with A in the small time interval dt is equal to the number of molecules within this cylinder, right? So what is the volume of the cylinder? So let's say volume of that cylinder, volume of the cylinder, cylinder is cross-sectional area A times the height or length, right? So this is my Vx dt, so, so A times dx. So this is the volume of the cylinder, all right? So, so we got the volume of the cylinder, volume of the cylinder equal to, so volume of the cylinder we got is A times the magnitude of Vx times dt, small time interval dt. So number of molecules, so number of molecules in so the number of molecules in this cylinder in this volume is the 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 molecules density so total number of molecules in that volume v times this small uh, volume right so we can say let's say total number of molecules is denoted by capital n and total volume of the container is v then i can say n times v times a vx this is velocity this is magnitude times dt. We can say that, right? And we can say on the average, on the average, on the average, half of them, half of these molecules, half of them are moving toward the wall, toward the wall right and half of them are getting uh, after collision they're ret coming returning or, or moving backwards right so the number of collisions um, with a so number uh, of collisions with a with the cross-section area a in small time interval dt's seconds is equal to half n over v area velocity and time All right so what's my total change in momentum so total change in momentum is equal to this number of collisions, so this is my total number of collisions, so I have n over v a vx dt, this is my total number of collisions, time each, uh, we saw in the earlier slide, that this is change in momentum was two times mass of each molecule times vx, right? So that was there. So total change of momentum in x direction, let's call it. So dpx, this is my change in momentum, is equal to, and a little bit of solving here. So n 
a uh, m v x square m v x square d t over volume right so this is coming from this and this cancels out let's look at n a m vx vx square dt over v so this is change in momentum right but we also know the change in moment so we can say dp x over dt is equal to this is dt this is equal to n a m v x square over volume right so dt came come this side so change in rate of change in momentum is nothing but uh, force right rate of change in momentum is force um, per unit area so this one i can from here you can write rate of change in momentum is nothing but force so i can write okay this is i can write force force um, is equal to n a m v x square over volume right and if i take this area here so it becomes force per unit area and that we know is my pressure right so i can say pressure is equal to f over a this is f and this is a divided by a and that will give me some value n over v n over v times m v x square right and here we can summarize uh, just uh, to remember what is n n is the number of molecules so total number of molecules the number of molecules right what is v v is my volume right this is my volume um, m is mass all molecules are identical mass of each molecule right each molecule and vx is the velocity of molecule so vx is velocity velocity uh, in the x direction in the x direction uh, of the molecule great so in earlier slide we um, saw this p is equal to n over v m v x square and p is the pressure uh, n um, is number of molecules v volume m is the mass of each molecule and v x uh, is the uh, velocity um, in the x uh, direction x component of velocity v right um, we mentioned that uh, magnitude of v x is um, is really not the same for all the molecules uh, but we could have sorted the molecules into groups having the same um, um, x uh, component of v within each group then added uh, up the resulting contribution to the pressure the net effect of all this is just to replace vx square um, by the average value of vx square so we could have simply replaced this uh, v x square as the average value of v x square so v x square average we can replace like this right so now another thing is that the speed v so this is all along x uh, direction right so if v is equal to we can write of v square is equal to v x square plus v y square plus v z square right and whereas x is x component of v y component of v and z component of uh, v so we can write um, v um, square average will be v x um, square average plus v y square average then we can write v square average is equal to vx square average plus vy square average plus vz square average. But there's no reason that these values are different because x, y, z are just arbitrary. So this one must be equal to this one must be equal to that one. So we will write. Okay. So hence v square average is three times vx square average. And you can solve this 
Hashgroup 